I go to trainers. How are we doing today? First and foremost, I want to wish uh, my subscribers from the United States happy independence anniversary. I want to thank God for keeping us alive to see another new year. I pray God for him to bless the country. All right, so today I want to just uh, show us a little thing. You know, for quite some time now, I've been working on entry. All right, I've been working on entry. I've been trying to, you know, enlighten us on the best way to approach our entry, the right way to do it in such a way that we we'll have uh, less error, you know, and then uh, we'll be right most of the time. Okay. Today, I'm going to just discuss with you. It's, it's going to be more of discussion than analysis. Okay. You know, in different videos, I've done different uh, courses on entry, ranging from my entry rules, ranging from um, entry rules to multi time frame analysis, to candlestick pattern, to all those things, and how you can use it together with Fibonacci. You know, a lot of stuff that I have put everything together for your consumption. All right, but today I'm going to teach you something that is special. Especially in the sense that it's going to reduce drastically, you know, the number of trades that some of you, you know, uh, take within a week or within a month. I've seen a, a trader who took almost 600 trades in two weeks. 600 trades guy in two weeks. This can be exhausting. This can this can be time. You can be tired, you can be frustrated, especially if you are not getting it right, guys. So, um, teaching you uh, how to, uh, you know, uh, consider the best setup that you take is something that is very, very, very important and something that everybody should take very seriously. That's what we want to center uh, this uh, content on. How do you select? the best setup that you will trade. Of course, you know that we have learned entry rules, all right? There are different setup that you can apply the entry rules. But what I want to emphasize on is that it is not all setups that you are supposed to trade as a trader. Professional traders don't treat every setup that come their way. They are very selective. What do I say? They are very, very selective. All right? So based on back testing, based on experience, based on uh, practical applications, there are some setup that, that are of high probability, OK? Because you have seen it that all the probability is stacked to your favor. And you see that some of those setups you really go wrong when you see them. Okay, so my advice to you today is that you must practice, you must do your analysis, and you must be able to identify those setups that are highly probable for you. And at least minimum, maximum rather, I encourage traders to take either one or two of such setup. Myself, I have my own. I have my two setup that I trade. If I see any other setup apart from these two, I don't take it. But when I see these two set up, if I lose, if I lose it, for instance, I know that it give me another opportunity. Maybe I enter too early. I get into the buy or get into the sell too early. And in that case, with mutual adjustment by gaining, I catch the move. Do you understand now? So in my own case, over time, there are two setups that I usually trade that I don't 
normally lose them. And I have, you know, based my entry rules, based, I base my entry rules, my, my exit rules around those setup. Okay? That is the same thing I want you to replicate. I will show you my own. Then you go and get your own. For instance, the first setup I will show you that I treat is this. If on a higher time frame, all right, I'm having a trend on a higher time frame, okay, and I expect that at the end of this trend, this trend is supposed to be over at this level, for instance, supposed to be over at this level. You remember that when I was teaching you market structure, I also introduced the concept of liquidity. At the top here, there are a lot of you know, market moves that in most cases can take traders out, can catch you unaware. So I have developed a means to mitigate such. I don't want to be caught unaware. And I want to get in right at supply level. So what I do is to look for end of structure pattern, possibly look for divergence. If you see divergence, that's good. If you don't see, that's fine. But what is important is that at the end of the structure, do we have a cell present? In this case, we are talking of a cell tree. Because we are in uptrend, do we have a cell present? All right, you want to look at it. We have a self present. See this an egoffin? This is an egoffin. I want to look at something like this on a daily time frame. All right, I want to look at something like this on a daily time frame. Okay, if I can see this kind of uh, candlestick pattern on a daily time frame, fine. I know that there is a self present in the market. All right, these are some of the things that uh, some of you, selling my subscribers, have learned in the past. But of course, I have to just remind you once again um, for you to understand uh, properly what I'm about to discuss with you today. All right, remember, this engulfing candlestick pattern is confirmed as a self pressure if you allow this daily candle you know, to close bearish. It must close bearish to show that from the beginning of the day to the end of the day, the market was a sell, 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 and no buy, buy, buy. Do you understand? So if this sell pressure is confirmed, what I have to do is to go back to one hour time frame. I just go back to one hour time frame. And I've told you repeatedly, that if you are able to identify a self pressure on a daily time frame, you know, by way of uh, spotting a buffing candlestick pattern or railroad track, all right? By the time you get in to a uh, one hour time frame, you are going to see an impulse. You are going to see an impulse this way, all right? And after the impulse, Okay, it's an impulse this way. You are going to see a corrective structure this way. All right. And this corrective structure, I now have to, you know, try to understand, you know, uh, uh, the, 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 right? You have to understand the corrective structure that you see there. Okay. What is the nature of this correct? Very, very important, guys. It's very, very important. Okay. And I'm going to show you how I look at it. Things that I do, that I show you guys. For instance, if uh, at this point in time you are seeing a zigzag corrective structure, expect it to get to 61.8 or 78. The question is this, what happens if this zigzag does not get to 78? 
if he does not get to 61.8 or 78, if he get to 50% retracement here, what happened? I don't take the set. I will not take it. So I'm showing you another secret today. If a zigzag corrective structure is ending as 50% retracement, it means that it's going to form a double correction. What do I mean? It means that this three wave structure is going to be the first leg. We are going to see another three waves here, which is going to be a connector, and you see another push to the upside. This is the one that you are now going to take. By the time another three wave push to the upside happens, you now see that the size of that three wave structure and the size, this, the size of this three wave structure here and the size of this three wave structure here is the same. And this is the pinpoint entry that is now 78% replacement to the upside. So this is a W, X, and Y. Okay, in form of zigzag, and it will take you to the downside. This is my famous, one of my famous setup. All right. What of if it does not form a double correction? If it does not form a double correction, how do we look at it? I'm going to show you. You don't need to rush this lesson because it's something that you need to understand very clearly. There's no need for rushing. Okay. Now I've spotted my impulse in one hour time frame. Okay, if you form something like this, this is a corrective structure. This is allowed. This may not even get to 50% retracement. It may just end at 38. Okay, 38% retracement. Okay. May end at 38% retracement. All right, and that 38% retracement is okay because this is sideways correction. This is sideways correction. This one can make a move to the downside. All right, can make a move to the downside. Right, so you can see it's a sideways structure, so it is allowed. But in most of the time, even when I see a little corrective structure that is sideways and is corrected to 38% in this way, I don't normally take it. I don't know why. I don't just feel like taking a shallow retracement. This is a shallow retracement. I don't take it. This is 38. Can you see it here? I don't take it. I want to take minimum of 50 to 61.8, minimum, all right? But, you know, I've shown you uh, how uh, a zigzag can reject to 78% uh, uh, retracement, I've shown you. So now you are going to see how expanding flag can also make a rejection, a retracement of 78% uh, 78% retracement. All right, you see it here. All right, let me try to take out some of this stuff. Okay, you see, this is a flat, a, a, a flat structure that is an expanded flat. Can you see? It has broken this low and it has taken this high. It's an expanding, expanding flat. This is with A, this is with B, this is with C. Can you see? Boom. Boom. And then exactly here at 78. See? Sometimes you don't need to even use feet. Based on experience, you already know where 78 is. <laughs> Can you see? Exactly at 78. I have not used feet when I do it that it will end here. All right? So, can you see? Expanding flat will end at 78%. Sometimes too, it can end at 61.8. At times, it can stop in between. Can you see? Have a move to the downside. This is my famous, one of my famous, you know, setup. Of course, it can also appear in the form of if I see an impulse in daily time frame. All right, I see an impulse in daily time frame. So by the time it corrects back to 50 to 61.8, I also want to wait to see engulfing candlestick appear here. All right, at this arrow here, there's engulfing, really engulfing candlestick pattern. 
and go through candlestick pattern. Look at it. This way, that one. This way. Can you see? This is daily and go through. And then do you notice that when you feel, remember this daily time frame, when you take a few here, you are right at a structural area. It's a structural area, a turning point area. It's a structural area between 0 0.618 and possibly 0 0.78. Maybe this move to the downside is a zigzag. Okay, it is a zigzag. All right. So when the candlestick, this is a daily time frame, and the candlestick that is forming here is forming and broken for me. Okay, so what I do is I have to drop this time frame to one hour. Okay, there on one hour, I'm going to see this impulsive, this graphic candle is going to form a positive move on one hour. I'll now look for correction to 61.8. This way, I'll take my trade right to the upside. Can you see? Right to the upside. Can you see? So you see that the same techniques I've used for the resistance here, I'm also using it for the support. I'm also using it for a replacement in higher time frame. All right. So this is the first set. This is the first entry setup that I trade. That if I don't see this, I don't trade. I want to show you the second one now. All right. Second one that I consider. Second one I consider is more corrective. In nature than impulsive in nature. I think some of you might not understand what I mean by uh, impulsive and corrective in nature and not uh, impulsive in nature. You might not understand, but I'm going to show you right now. For instance, if I have if I have a move, if I've done my analysis. And I now have, you know, a move to the market. And this move, you know, after we have made three wave move to the upside, all right, I now have three wave move backward. This is one of my famous trades. In that case, you know that you are expecting another three waves to the upside. But what I do is I take a few of these first three waves. I now mark the level of 50 to 61.8. Watch me do it clearly. I mark this, I mark this level, 50 to 61.8, okay? After I've marked this level, remember this wave here has not formed. This one has not formed. I'm only expecting a retracement. I'm expecting a correction, but I don't know the nature of that correction. Whether it's going to be an expanding flat or a zigzag, I don't know. So what I do is I will mark this 50 to 61.8 to sell it to smith level. And if this market is coming down, to form, if it's coming down and it's coming down impulsively and does not form a three-wave structure, of course, that's not my setup. But what I want to see is a three-wave setup, a three-wave move, A, B, and C. And this three-wave move, if it comes and ends at between 50 to 61.8, I won't, I won't take it. Except if the, there is equal leg between with A and with C. What do I mean that the, uh, there must be an equal leg? This leg with A to the downside, this is with B as pull back to 50 to 61.8 and make a boom to the downside. Do you notice that this leg here is not equal to this leg here? So even though this market has a retrace to 50 to 61.8 of this three-wave move, 
is not still qualified by my guideline, I won't take it. But if instead this leg has come to the downside this way, do you notice that now there's equality between the wave A that moved down and the wave C. Can you see? They are now of equal leg. And by the time you take the feed of the three wave structure to the upside, when you take this feed, guys, what are you going to get? Instead of 61.8, you are now getting 78% chasing. If I have between 60 to 78% food retracement, where I have three waves up, three waves down, correctively, guys, I'm going to take this trade to the upside. From this level, I'm going to take it to the upside. Uh, let me uh, get this. Get this. Done. Oh. All right, let me draw this to this side. Yes, I see how I get the setup. This is what I look for. If I don't see this, I don't feel like trading. I'm not going to take any trade until I see these two uh, types of setup. All right, I'm going to take this one from here to the upside. And again, for me to take this, there is one confirmation that I will now use, right? There's a confirmation that I will use. Remember that if you have your RSI here, RSI, if you want to use it, uh, you know, to measure divergence. Of course, you know, divergence is measured between two impulses, impulse, correction, impulse. You can't take divergence of this correction. Some people, they make mistakes of uh, uh, using divergence for corrective structure. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Nobody should listen to any, any teacher, any trainer that is that, uh, uh, carrying out divergence of a corrective structure. It does not work that way. Divergence is, you know, is, is found between two impulsive moves. For instance, it's an impulsive move, it's a corrective structure, it's an impulsive move. You want to see, that's what divergence is all about. You want to see the pressure in this market moving downside and the pressure in this market moving downside. Even if this market, as it's moving downside, is moving more powerfully than this one. It is possible that when we find divergence between the two legs, there will be divergence. Can you see? There will be divergence. Okay, see? It's making a higher low, while this is making a lower low. It then means that even as this one is pushing downward eh, on a big time, the Computer algorithm is telling us that it's not really pushing to the downside, that the momentum is upside. So that shows me that this three wave structure that I have as a pullback, I'm going to have a high probability of a move to the upside, in as much as I have gotten my equal leg between this leg and this leg. And especially in this three wave structure. It's now retraced to 78. If it's retraced to 78, number one, number two, I have equal leg between this leg and this leg, number two. Number three, I have a divergence between them, meaning that this upside is more, is probably. Somebody will ask me now, what of if you have a three-wave structure to the upside, Okay, and three wave structure to the downside that make 50 to 61.8, but there is no divergence. It has made equal legs, but by the time you carry out a divergence test on this structure, 
Okay, you are now having something like this. Something like this. So what does it mean? The one low here, the one low here. So what it means at this stage, guys, is not that this move to the upside is not going to come. It's not that like this move is not going to come. No, that's not what it means. What it means is that there is still going to be a correction here and one more push to the downside. It's as simple as that, guys. It means that there is still going to be a corrective structure and one more push to the downside. And by the time that push to the downside happens, probably on your RSI, you must have had something like this. So it means that between this push, this middle push, and this last push, if you find the divergence, you see that there is divergence. It then means that this, is, this trade is now ready. To the upside, is somebody getting this uh, crazy setup now? This is another setup that I take. The first one is to get to supply zone or demand zone and see a sell pressure or a buy pressure. See, uh, prove that uh, buy pressure or sell pressure through engulfing candlestick pattern. After you have seen the engulfing candlestick pattern, step down to one hour time frame, spot your impulse, spot your correction to 61.8 to 78% retracement or 50% retracement and take your trade. The second setup that I take is all about correction. You see correction, you see a correction this way, you see a three-week corrective structure. You want to see another three-week corrective structure down, okay, before you take your trade to the upside. But before you take this trade to the upside, there's a test I have to carry it out. If I measure the impulsive leg here with A and with C here, if I look at the divergence, if there is no divergence, between them, there's no divergence. This one making a lower low. The other one too is making a lower low. It then means that I'm not going to take a buy blindly. There's still going to be a correction and one more push down, okay? After that one more push down, then we cannot take our trade to the upside. It's as simple as that, guys. So these are two setup that I take in the market. And if I don't see them, I don't trade. Guys, if I don't see them, I don't trade. Let's see if we can get example of some of these structures. All right, let's see if we can get some examples of some of these structures. You see this one, it's a three-wheel structure to the downside. All right, now have this strong pulls to the upside, okay? After the strong push to the upside, what do you see next? You see a corrective structure, A, B, and C. Okay? Now, what am I to measure? Forget that I'm not doing it from high time frame. I'm doing it from lower time frame. It is just for you to understand the concept, all right? So what do I have to do? This wave here, if I take the feed, I want to see that this one has come up to 61.8. It turned exactly 61.8. All right. Now, the question I want to ask myself next is that, is there equal leg between A and C? Between with A, this with A, this is with B, and this is with C. Do we have equal leg between this wave here? And this way here. Yeah. How can you test? You go to trend based feed extension. This one. You drop it here, you extend it here, you take it back here. Are you at 100 to 123% feed extension? Yes. Look at it here. So this is the turning point. If we have to make a continuation to the upside. So equal leg, correct. Impulse, correct. Correction in three waves, correct. So all I want now is this wave to the upside. 
so that because uh, because if you have this as w guys you cannot have this as x is too sharp so you have to have this as with a brackets this three wave structure to the downside will now be your wave b in brackets now i want to see you will see in bracket i want to see you will see in bracket here okay so this with a in bracket b in bracket c in bracket has now formed a three wave structure you no know, initially you have three wave structure down that is w now you now have a perfect three wave structure up which is your x okay x what next you have these three waves down you must have another three waves down which is what y can you see now it's beginning to make sense it's beginning to make sense at this stage you will now have you have a move to the upside a move to the upside here yeah. can you see so now what do we now need to do in order to get this opportunity? You know, the move has happened already. All right, the move has happened already. So what do we need to do? What I'm just waiting for tomorrow is this. I'm waiting for the possibility of using my second, you know, setup that I treat. I'm seeing possibility of it happening here. What is the setup? Setup is simple. Three wheel structure up, three wheel structure down. That's all. That's what I'm expecting. And by the time I take the fifth of the three wheel structure up, okay, when I take the fifth of the three wheel structure up, then three, this three wheel structure down, am I getting it? at 50 to 61.8 is it getting here if yes it gets you eventually get to this level i want to find out can you see that these three waves of the push here and the push here they are of equal length okay they are of equal length so i want to see the size of the wave that will come to the downside this one here right here guys this one right here, this wave here, and this wave here. Are they of equal length? If yes, at this level of 61.8. Then, once they are equal length, remember guys, being of equal length here is of greater priority to me than the retracement level of this first three wave move to the upside. This first three wave move to the upside can retrace to 50%. In as much as my A, B, A, and C of this retracement are of equal leg, I will take it at 50%. If it comes to uh, uh, 61.8% retracement and they are of equal leg, I'm going to take it there. If it gets to 78% retracement before they are of equal leg, that is where I will take it. All right? So, can you see the second setup that I take, that I treat right now? Here, if this make equal leg at this 78, perfect, perfect, is where you're going to take this straight to the upside. Can you see? That's the second setup that I want to trade. Where's my stop loss? If it end at, if equal leg end at 61.8, my stop loss will be just above 78% me. What of if the equal leg comes to 78 percent retracement where's your stop loss your stop loss is just below the level of the impulse okay this was called three wave impulse you no know, you have uh don't be deceived guys you have a single impulse in the market you have a single impulse okay then you have a three wave impulse in the market one, two, three. This is a three-wave impulse. So 
My second strategy is based on three waves in force. Can you see one, two, three? I want one, two, three back. So this first one, two, three, even though it's a three wave structure, is acting in the position of an impulse. That is what I want you to understand. Guys. Even though it is a three wave structure, ABC is acting, is behaving as if it's an impulse because that three wave structure is being corrected by another three wave structure. So in that case, this three wave structure that is the correction is the proper correction. And the three wave structure that is to be offside is a three waves impulse. And then the third type of impulse is a five wave impulse. One, two, three, four, five. This is what all of you uh, put uh, a lot of focus and attention on because this is what is described in Elliot Wood theory. All right? This single impulse is not discussed in Elliot Wood theory. But I can show you countless number of times that you can have a three wave impulse in one, a single wave impulse in the market. Look at it here. This is an impulse, guys. It's an impulse. This impulse here, do you see one, two, three, four, five there? No. Do you see one, two, three wave there? No. You see a single wave to the offside. That is an example of a single wave impulse. And there are many in the market. All right? So this is a three wave impulse to the upside. I want to see a three wave push down. I want to see equal leg. And if possible, I also want to see a divergence. A divergence, All right? I don't know. Let's go to UJPY. Let's see if we get divergence. Okay. This three wave structure to the downside. Let's see if we got a divergence. It's very, very important, guys. You have to look at this leg, this leg here, and this leg here. That's A and C. With A, with B, and with C. What qualifies this to be with A? What qualifies this to be B? What qualifies this to be C? You see, this A is very sharp, very fast. This C is very fast, but this B is very slow. All right? So, what I have to do is to check if there is a divergence between, between with, uh, with A and with C. So if you look at it this way, let's clear up this stuff. Look at it this way, from this point here to this point, you have to give me corresponding points on the indicator, see the corresponding point right here. See this one here, right here, right here. So if you have to connect the two points together, let's use our trend line, tools, see this lower low, then let's come to the indicator and connect it. What does it form? Lower low. Can you see? The value. So, by virtue of seeing this, at this level, guys, at this level here, we are not going to take this trade. Why? We are seeing a lower low here. This lower low shows that the much pressure you see here in this trade coming down here, you have a greater pressure to the downside here. So, why do you want to buy a market? that is having a greater pressure to the downside. That is the problem. Why must you buy it? So if you must not buy it that way because of the imminent breakdown to the downside, what must you do? And you can see, you can see by yourself that when this market make a move from here, it did not make an impulsive move. Rather, it made a three-wave structure. This three wave structure, even if it has to meet another three wave structure before it pulls up, it shows that it's going up correctively because there is no greater pressure to the upside. Rather, we have a greater pressure to the downside, as indicated by this indicator. Can you see? Lower low, 
based on the push between A and C, and then lower low based on the RSI indicator. So when I see that kind of scenario, I don't take it right from here. But if I see a situation where, you see, let me draw my RSI here. See, this is my point here. Okay, and you see this. Guys, let me draw it very well. Guys, you deserve to get this thing well drawn. You deserve to get it well drawn. Okay. Let me draw it very well. You have the RSI. Okay. You have this here. Okay. So at any rate, you see what I'm trying to check. You see this move is making a higher low. Can you see? Even though this push to the downside is making a lower low compared to this, here I'm getting a higher low. So once this divergence is appearing here, I don't waste time, guys. This is going to be my entry. I'm going to just come to this, this place right away, guys. Take my, take my what? My buy directly. As long as I have equal length, equal size between A and C, I'm going to take my trip directly. But in this scenario, you see that if you clear all and you look at the push between A and C, look at the push, okay, A, B, and C. Go back to your indicator. Bring out RSI. Okay, no, before you bring out RSI, check the impulse, which is this one. Has it been corrected to 50 to 61.8? You need to check first. Very essential part, essential element of the strategy. All right? Right at 61.8 here, correct? Does it make equal length, equal size? Yes, equal length. This one is even more than it, which is better for us. Can you see? Yes. You want to check too. Now that this length here is far more than this one, does it make field extension above 1.618? It's very important. That's another field confirmation. Show you right here. Is it more than 1.618? No way. It's not more than. Can you see? Exactly at 1.618 field extension, what does it do? Reverse. Assuming it comes down to this level, this, has, this structure has become invalidated. If it, come, if it goes far below 1.618 feet extension, it is invalid. But now, it does not go past that level. So for that reason, this is a structural correction of this impulse. And a move to the upside is probable. All right? So if that is the case, now I want to check whether I have my divergence. Do I have divergence? No way. There's no divergence. So for that reason, I'm not going to take this trade directly from the downside here. I'm not going to take it directly from the downside. I have lower low here, lower low. So what I want is that although I'm going to make a move to the upside, it's going to be very slow. Therefore, I want a situation where this market gathers momentum. What is this one where I will have three wave structure here? I will have another three wave structure here. So I have a push to the offside. So in that case, because I have no divergence, meaning that the pressure is to the downside, then if we have to make a move to the upside, I want to see it develop correctly. Okay, because we don't have pressure to the upside. That is the scenario where you are having a move to the upside correctively is because you don't have pressure to the upside. You rather have pressure to the downside. But the market structure and the corrective nature, the positive and corrective nature of the market necessitates that it moves to the upside. But there is no momentum to the upside. So when situations like that happen, we are going to see the move to the upside happening correctively. 
That is why I'm telling you that after these three wheel structure to be upside, I'm expecting, I'm expecting a three wheel move down that will come to 50 to 61.8. So if at this level, I'm able to get a three-wave structure, clean one to come to this level, what I will do is simple. Can you see the essential element of this setup? What I will just do is simple. I'll go back to my RSI. I want to check if this leg here and this leg here, is there divergence? If yes, there are divergence, this is my entry. I look for psychological level here, enter, to move to the upside. But if there is no divergence, I will wait. But in this scenario, there is going to be a divergence here. Because since this market wants to make a move to the upside, this move here is not going to exact much pressure by this one. This one will be a bigger pressure, and this one will be a lesser pressure. And how is this bigger and lesser pressure going to appear on our side? Bigger pressure down, lesser pressure up, and then you have your divergence. Lower low here, and then a higher low here. Once you have it that way, guys, you waste no time. You waste no time. Take your trade to the upside. This is what we are expecting. So, guys, these are the two set up I trade in the market. If I don't see this, I'm not going to trade. If I don't see this, I don't usually trade. That is why at times you see for two days, for three days, you don't see my trade. It does not mean that market is not moving. Okay, market is moving, but I cannot see my setup. Market is moving, but I cannot see my setup. So, if you, if you are able to adopt the same techniques, what you do is that trade a lot of setup, but do a, carry out a statistic of your success rate. Not the one that you are usually successful with. Once you note that one, you are good to go. That is the one you will be taking. And guys, if you don't see that one, you don't trade. You don't see it, you don't trade. You see it, you are good to go. It's as simple as that. I'm going to show you one example before we go. Let me show you one example before we go, guys. Daily, on this same pair, you will keep the one. How I miss uh, about 260 pips to the downside for my signal channel and how I put it live on my own account. I lost it by just 10 pips, but I have to reassess I've got him and I caught all the 250 pips to the downside. Look at it. This is a structure on a daily. We're expecting this to fall, to push down, okay? But rather, what we are seeing here, first and foremost, is a selling pressure. You see, this is some kind of selling pressure. So as soon as this selling pressure comes, what do I do? Let's just mark that candle, this particular one. Go to one hour time frame. We are going to see a big impulse in one hour. All right. We're going to see a big impulse in one hour. Can you see? We have the impulse in one hour. To the downside. So what do you have to what do you have to do? You take correction. You just fib it and note the correction. Fib it this way. All right. And then what is the corrective structure? I told you, I made it very clear to you that you can see my setup. I've seen selling pressure. I've come back to one hour. I've seen the impulse. I've filled the impulse. I'm now studying the corrective structure. You know where I will get it. I told you that if I now have a three wave structure to the upside, and this three wave structure does not come 
to 50 to 61.8. And it's making a downside. I don't touch it. What it's, what it's telling me is that it's going to make a correction and another three wave structure to the upside. That is the one that will catch 78% retracement. This is a WXY structure in the form of C tag. I love this. W, three waves up, X, three waves down, and Y. And by the time this Y has formed here, what happened? You have taken 50 to, uh, you have taken 78% retracement. All right. And after that, what do you see? If you cannot get in here, boom, import. All right. Get in. Check imports here. Check retracement of this impulse. At this level, you just want any retracement to give you a discount. Get in. Get in. All right. Get in. Where do we where do we got strong? When we wanted to enter this tree. I'm going to show you right now, right now, right now. I'm going to show you right now. Where the issue was is that at this level, I believe that we are now moving to the downside. We have corrective structure. We are moving down. I give this tree to my signal channel at 142.60. 64, this level thinking will go down. This market now made a pullback. A pullback to where? A pullback to 78. Right? A pullback to 78. And as soon as we got this 78 here, as soon as we got this 78 here, we now had a move to the downside. Can you see? So when everybody was out at this level, after this retracement, I got in here. Exactly at this level, I got in. Because I was telling myself, this is my famous setup. I know what I'm doing. This is my famous setup. I cannot lose this trade. Okay, can you see? I got in exactly at 78 here. That is one. 43.75, okay? That was the exact point I got in, and it made 260 pips to the downside from here to this level. I took two, I, I got in, I got out here, 265 pips to the downside. Can you see? So that is, those are the two famous setup that I see, that I trade in the market. And if I don't see this, I don't trade. So I want you to go and start back testing, start trading all different setup, start trading different setup. After a week or two, start narrowing down based on the success rate that you record on those, uh, on those setup. So choose the best two setup, the best two, the ones that give you frequent profit. The one that you see that anytime you spot it in the market, you are going to get the probability of you getting profit is more than the probability of you losing the two. Go and get one or two for yourself. And once you get that one or two, guys, you know what it's going to do for you? It's going to reduce your over trading. I have done my research and I've done my, I've gotten my findings. 70%, 70% of retail traders that lose money gallantly, they lost it to over trading, over trading. Yes. And then most, and this 70% of this retail trader that lose that uh, uh, woefully, abysmally to over trading. 95% of them have no regard for risk management. So if your risk management is top notch and you are able to stick with only two setup, two types of setup that give you high win probability, it's going to help you to reduce over trading to the barest minimum.
And I can guarantee you, if overtrading is reduced to the barest minimum, you have a greater chance of success in the market. Okay? So, guys, that will be the end of the video. Go back test. Go get your own famous setup. The one that will turn you to a millionaire. I've got in mind to get yours. All right? So, that will be the end of the video. If you have not subscribed to my channel, do so because I believe there are a lot of content that will benefit you here. You have subscribed, you are watching it right away. Make sure you pass your comment. If you have any question, ask me in the comment session. I will definitely respond. And if there is anything that is still confusing, confusing you in one way or the other, let me know. If I can be of help, I will definitely help you. All right? So see you next time, guys. Peace.